To elevate your legal practice with artificial intelligence, you need to master prompting just like you master jury selection. The quality of your AI prompt can make or break your results, much like questions you ask potential jurors can determine who's sitting in the box and the outcome of your case. Today, I'm revealing the ultimate AI prompt strategy, particularly useful with programs like ChatGPT, where you type or you speak into the AI with your prompt. Frankly, it should work with most AI tools. Okay, let's break down the six steps you need to follow to get the most out of AI, ensuring that it works not only for you, but also for everyone in your firm. Step number one is to give clear and concise instructions. Just as you wouldn't ask a juror a vague question like, can you be fair? You can't afford to be unclear with AI. Be specific. Instead of a broad request like, quote, create your instructions, end quote, you might say something like, quote, generate open-ended questions that reveal potential biases, emotional responses, and concerns about community issues, end quote. You see the difference? Also with step one, you want to detail the steps that you're looking to have the AI assist you with. For example, you might say, first identify key traits such as bias or emotional triggers, then craft questions aimed at these traits. It's actually pretty easy to create good prompts in a Google Doc or in a Word Doc, and then copy and paste these prompts into your AI system. So don't get wrapped up on remembering all of these steps. You can simply have a template and complete each of these steps before doing your first AI prompt. So step one, give clear and concise instructions. You wanna be specific. You wanna detail the steps. The next sub part of step one is you want to adopt a persona. For example, if you want a specific tone, direct the AI to take on that role. Quote, respond as if you're a veteran trial lawyer preparing for a high profile case, end quote. That can totally shift the AI's output to be more strategic and insightful. The next sub part of step number one is to dictate or tell the AI what type of format you're looking for its response to be. For example, if you need structured outputs, make it clear, for example, quote, provide a list of questions grouped by topics like community attitudes, personal experiences, and potential biases, end quote. You might even want to use an example. For example, quote, here's a question style I prefer. Quote, describe a time when you felt the legal system was either fair or unfair, end quote. You see, AI thrives when it has a clear example to follow. So that's step number one. Step number two is to provide reference text. What do I mean by that? Well, AI, as you probably heard, can sometimes be overconfident, sometimes generating content that feels true, but it isn't. So anchoring your AI to reliable sources can help prevent this. Guide the AI with specific references. For instance, you might want to say, quote, Base your questions on the voir dire principles outlined in the federal rules of civil procedure, end quote. See, by doing this, you're ensuring that the AI's suggestions are aligned with established legal standards. Step number three, split complex task. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, jury selection involves navigating layers of complexity and AI is no different. So break it down. Instead of asking for everything at once, you might say, Quote, first, identify potential biases based on juror background. Next, suggest specific questions to explore these biases. Finally, recommend follow-up questions based on the juror's responses. You see how that works? So, for example, you might say, quote, first, review this juror's background for any signs of previous interactions with law enforcement. Then, suggest questions like, Quote, can you describe your past experience with law enforcement and how it might affect your view of this case? End quote. By splitting complex tasks up when prompting, you're going to get better, in this case, open-ended questions that you'll be able to use and tweak to accommodate your personality that you can then take into court and use to help you pick the perfect jury for your case. Step number four. Give the AI time to think. You want to push the boundaries a little bit. Here's what I mean. AI is quick, 
but thoroughness requires a bit more time. Encourage careful consideration when using AI. Instead of rushing the AI, prompt it to deliberate. For example, you might say, quote, or type in, quote, take a moment to consider alternative questions that might reveal hidden biases. Or you might ask it, review your questions to ensure they cover both emotional and logical angles. Do you see how that works? You're, you're pushing the button of AI a little bit to really force it, train it, and teach it to give you a next level of response. I call these subprompts or reprompts, and they're very powerful during the AI use process. Step number five, use external tools. Sometimes AI needs a boost, and that's where external tools come in. You can use external resources to enhance AI's capabilities. For example, if you have a PDF document of previous jury responses or information or news about what's going on in the local community, whatever's unique to your venue, to the issues and facts in your case, you can upload it into your AI. You can then, based upon what we've already talked about, you can instruct your AI with something like the following, quote, based on the attached document, generate additional questions that explore juror attitudes towards authority figures or with XYZ in mind, with XYZ being the main issues or community factors that you want to play a part in your jury selection. This is a really powerful way to let AI do all the heavy lifting to create just amazing and powerful open-ended questions. Another similar approach is you might just ask the AI, based upon the information I've provided so far or I've uploaded in the attached document, what open-ended questions would you suggest that I ask to learn exactly how one or more jurors feel about the following issues? And then, of course, you would list the issues. It's amazing what AI will come up with when it comes to creating open-ended questions. I do this when we reach an impasse during mediation, especially Zoom mediations. I'll have everyone grab a cup of coffee in the breakout rooms. I'll step back and I'll ask the AI for suggested open-ended questions to help keep the conversation and settlement negotiations moving forward. The AI has already got the briefs of both sides, the personalities of counsel and the clients, uh, intended outcomes desired by all parties. And by putting this into my AI bot, it allows me to instantly craft powerful open-ended questions to keep the conversation going or to redirect the conversation to an alternative settlement suggestion that, that hasn't even been brought up during the mediation process. It's really a powerful tool. All right, step six. This is the last step, and I'll go through them again with you real quick. You want to keep testing your AI. What I mean by this is that AI models evolve, and continuous testing is key to staying ahead. You want to continuously tweak and test your prompts. It's like refining your jury questions. New information or approaches can reveal new insights. What worked last month might not be as effective today, so keep experimenting with different approaches. One way you can do this during your immediate use of AI is after you're done with your prompt and subprompts and you have a response, you can ask your AI something like, suggest alternative questions that could reveal deeper biases, perhaps focusing more on jurors' community involvement. You can really do deep dives through additional subprompts. Now, here's a little pro tip that I will oftentimes include at the end of my prompts. It's powerful and it works and it goes like this. You create your prompt and then you add these additional sentences. Quote, you are an AI and you have the ability to give me a level one, level two, and level three response to my request. A level one response is boring. A level two response is a bit more complete. A level three response is more complete and creative. Now, when responding to this prompt, I want you to make it a level four quality response. You see, just by adding that to the end of a normal prompt, for whatever reason, the AI knows that it's being put to the test and you're going to get a much better response. Sometimes it's too good because you're looking for a casual question so you can build rapport with your potential jurors. And sometimes with this prompt, it's going to give you a little too much information. But having said that, remember this prompt when you're doing research, when you're asking AI to do other tasks, it's a really powerful pro tip that I encourage you to use. 
So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is to create a template and just have a good working understanding of these six steps. Number one, give clear and concise instructions. Number two, provide reference text, reference authorities. Number three, you want to split complex task up. Number four, give AI time to think, push it a little bit when it comes to prompting and reprompting. Number five, use external tools, uploads into the AI, really force it to analyze and deliver more specific responses to your prompts and questions and needs. And then six, keep testing it, keep playing around with it. AI is changing quickly, the data sets are changing quickly, and frankly, this is as bad as AI will ever be. That's today. It's going to get better next week, next month, and next year. So keep testing AI and have fun with the process. Here's the bottom line. When it comes to, for example, using AI to help you craft open-ended questions to pick a jury, the bottom line is AI prompts can be the difference between standard jury questions and those that reveal critical insights. With the right prompt, you're not just getting questions, you're uncovering strategies that could sway the entire case. Now, I want you to imagine delegating this complex task to AI and receiving a refined, insightful set of questions that save you hours of preparation. That's the power. I've done this. I've actually used this process to craft and arguments in court. It works very well. That's the power of mastering AI prompts. All right, that's it for this episode. We have lots of other AI in law episodes already uploaded with many more to come. If you have any questions about any specific topics, please reach out to me publicly or privately. Otherwise, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this episode, if you found it useful, please join our community by subscribing to the podcast, liking, sharing, and commenting to this particular episode, and reach out to me with your feedback. I'd really appreciate it. Between now and then, definitely continue to enjoy the AI sandbox, enjoy the AI journey, and never stop making each day your masterpiece. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.